fun? Well, once again, everybody, uh, this is a fantastic time for all of us. It's Anya and Dan. <laughs> And actually, we're doing a really, really crazy concept that a lot of us kind of throw around. We, we're like, ah, everything's this, and us pushed out, right? It's one of the biggest questions that I think a lot of us talk about, a lot of us really believe in. Yeah. And Agnes and I decided, right, we were going to talk about this today. So, like, Agnes, like, us pushed out is probably, you give us the kind of understanding of just the general, like the, you know, here's the, here's the yep. 50-word version of us pushed out. Okay. Oh, by the way, hello. I guess maybe we should say hello, right? Not just <laughs> jump right in. Yeah. Let's push that. What's, what's going on with it? Okay. Well, the first time I heard everyone as you pushed out, it was from Neville. And he talked about the whole world as you pushed out or everyone as you pushed out. And it is the concept of that everything that is around you, what you're living in your relationships with people, your money, your health condition, your job, your relationships with family is around you because on some level you are projecting something that is a magnet that corresponds with the external 3D situation. So that is it in a very short nutshell. Which, by the way, I just a quick, quick future uh, tell here. Uh, think about it. That's kind of exactly what we're talking about with how we affect our reality. So the law of yeah. attraction and all that stuff. And yeah. this is us pushed out. It's kind of the same thing. So it is. And also another thing is the Ho'oponopono because the Ho'oponopono talks about dissolving the part of you that created something externally. So that too, that these things all dovetail together. And that's like the astral letters thing that I talk about frequently as well as it is. It's, it's, it's removing that thing that is blocking you. It's a blockage. It's like an energy blockage in reality, frankly, but that yeah. Ho'oponopono is the same thing as mm. kind of cutting that, that thing in the past. You're rubbing out, I think, is even kind of similar to a degree. Like it, it does, right? Like it's kind of mm. trying to kind of ex remove something. Aspect. Yeah. So again, I think a beautiful point. So we had a couple questions that were brought to us by a viewer. Yeah. And we thought we would kind of start there. And I, I think they're good ones. And that, I, that's where I think this us pushed out. A lot of people ask a lot of questions. We see them in the comments. Like Anya and I have both done a few videos on this. You, I'm sure probably even more, but I've definitely done probably half a dozen videos on yep. this concept of us pushed out. And I, I think I have a slightly different take on it. There's places where you and I for sure well, I think 100% agree. And then there's a couple of places where I think we're just maybe a little different and I'd love to see like your yeah. perspective a little better because I think it's going to help me understand it better as a person and hopefully our viewers, that's more important. But I don't know, frankly, <laughs> <laughs> the world revolves around Dan. Huh? No. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. No, no, no. <laughs> All right, so the first question that she had was, when a girl meets a guy and they date for about a month or two and he says he doesn't want a relationship, but after sex gets involved, he starts to pull away. Like what happens in that case, the us pushed out thing, like all of a sudden, I don't know, things are weird. Suddenly we give it up <laughs> and yeah. all this, and then we lose them. So like we, what's going on there? Yeah. What do you think? Okay. The first thing when I read that question was, was a, a very primitive thing. Sometimes you just don't like someone's smell. Now this is, a side salad to everyone's you pushed out, you may be seeing someone and you feel connected to them and all that stuff. And then you get into bed with them and you just do not like the way that their body smells. You don't like, and it's, I'm not talking perfume or cologne or any of that stuff. Fair amount, fair amount. Yeah. The good stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, that was the first thing that jumped into my head when I read that because I know that that has that happens. I've heard it. I've heard of it in people coming to me for coaching. And I've also had that experience myself where you just do not like someone's smell. I mean, we are, it's, it's a primitive animalistic thing. Yeah. So and now, sometimes, sometimes a little bit of that animal part too is missing. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Wow, right the animal, the animal part. So anyway. looking back at the question from uh, everyone's you pushed out point of view, so the girl meets the guy and they date for about a month or two and he says he doesn't want a relationship. So my question would be, 
and I'm looking at this from the woman's point of view, if you know when he said he doesn't want a relationship and then you go and sleep with him, it kind of is common sense that he would pull away. Now, yes. from the everyone's you pushed out point of view, from the woman's point of view, what are you projecting about yourself if you're getting that result? Because it's not about him and what he's doing. It's about you and what you're doing. In this case, the woman, because we're talking about what the guy's doing. So as the woman, if he's pulling away, you say, okay, rather than saying, why is he pulling away? We just had sex. He's now gone. And you go into something look at back at what you went into before. Did you have thoughts of, and this is what I see again and again and again, because I coach people on this again and again and again, is you're going into sex with the notion of what if he doesn't like me? What if he doesn't want me? What if I'm not good enough? As in physically, as a relationship, what if I'm just not good enough in general? So you're projecting all this before you meet up with someone. You go into your old fears, your old not good enough stuff. And then this, the relationship which ends up in the bedroom, which ends up with him pulling away, it's just like when you toss the pebble into the pond, they're just ripples that continue out. The ripples are what you projected. You don't get stuff like that in your external world unless you have done something projecting stuff about yourself. I'm not good enough. I'm not beautiful enough. I don't have a nice enough bum. I don't have the, I'm not thin enough. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not whatever. Or you're thinking stuff about him. Men only want sex. Men can't commit. Men just use me for sex. You know, women always say this about men and it's true. So you're doing the self-fulfilling prophecy thing. So you got to look at what you're bringing into the fact that, I mean, the red flag for me in this question was he said after a month or two, he doesn't want a relationship, but then you still went and had sex with him. So why did you lower your self love to go and have sex with someone who doesn't want a relationship? If, and, and this doesn't say this in this question, if you wanted a relationship, why did you go and have sex with him? Why did you do that to yourself? So you've got to take responsibility. And this is what everyone's you pushed out is there for, is to show you the mirror of what you're doing to yourself. And that's when the whole ponopono comes in. You work on dissolving the part of yourself that you put yourself in harm's way. Okay, for, right you, off the bat. Okay, you go, you awesome. go. No, this is awesome because <laughs> I... 100% agree with you. And I think um, you, you nailed it with the projection and all that stuff. I think that's exactly it. And I, I guess the way I kind of wanted to take it since we completely agree is I was going to offer the guy kind of perspective. Yeah. Of it. Um, so you're this girl that's in this situation, right? Where you're looking for a relationship and you get with this guy and he's like, I don't want a relationship. I don't want a relationship. I don't want a relationship. And you're like, sure you will. Let's have sex. Yeah. That, not, um, necessarily that's not going to get a relationship for sure. Cause the guy already said he doesn't want that. And the yep. guy from his standpoint, he's like, why can't I just find people that don't want relationships? All yes. The time? You know, and yes. that's the kind of guy you attracted dudes ask 12 women exaggerating a little a night to find the one that goes, well, yeah. Right. Like that is how it works out for us. It's a numbers game. You yep. like, why some dudes have lines, right? And some lines, all be it very creative, you know, like, are you tired? You've been running in my mind all night. Like, really? Like, you just said that to people, human beings, you said that to. That's not okay in any country, at least I think. Well, <laughs> in any country. Yes, it's not okay. It's not. So, again, a lot of things kind of happen in that whole, this is how the worlds play out. And that particular guy has his own us pushed out aspects going on. Yep. And so his bling, bling, like sonar is going on. And then you're over there going bling, bling. And he's like, oh, 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 similar bling. And you're like bling. And he's like bling. And then all of a sudden you get together and you have this ridiculous two months together. And then yep. you have sex. And then he goes bling. Yeah. Bling, and that's it. And yep. you, that's what you attracted. 
Yeah. All of a sudden you sit down and the thing that Anya's and I always unfortunately talk about is the us or the uh, self love. <gasps> yeah. I said it. Anya, I'm sorry, but self love. Yeah. Sometimes as you start doing that, you start to realize some of these things you do. So mm. I, it's very good. So that was that was my little bit of color I thought was worth adding because I mm. completely agree with you. So Anya, mm. so, um, so the next question. Let's just see what goes on here. Girl meets guy. Yeah. Start to date, and later uh, finds out he's married. Right, or is yeah. in a relationship or whatever. So yeah. you know, I guess I mean the one thing she brings too is she did ask. So. I did ask. He lied. Yeah. And yeah. And later, so uh, mm. first off, he kind of lied. I yeah. just want to say, just put a little quote. Mm. I'm Let's, saying. I'm okay. Saying. So he meets girl meets guy, starts to date, later finds out he's married or in a relationship, especially if she asked in the beginning if he lied about it. So, so you already had a feeling. Otherwise, you wouldn't have asked. Why do you ask someone if they are, I mean, she would have obviously asked, are you married or are you in a relationship? And the person said no. Okay, so you find out later that he lied. But the yeah. thing is, you do not attract people that do that. Uh, you are the common denominator. It doesn't matter whether he lied or he didn't. Yeah. You attracted that human being in that condition in the first place. They don't hover around you unless you have a matching component. And what I mean by that is there's got to be on some level that you feel not good enough, unworthy, undeserving, second best on some level. Believe all people lie. Believe all guys are yeah, liars. There's yes, some yes. weird belief that helps support. All men guy. are play. I find the one a lot of women believe in these situations is all men are players. That's a reoccurring thing that comes from their Girl, mothers, you know. their grandmothers. And they believe that. Yeah. No, that's it, it, 100% mm. right. But yeah, the, the way you bring about, yeah, exactly. We attract that to ourselves. I really we think do. the last question was the same kind of concept where us pushed out. I still kind of feel like we're all these little individual pulsating things. And when we finally, uh, we're broadcasting a specific need because usually of how we believe of ourselves. And that can be a, like, I am the most amazing person. All these wonderful things happen to me blah, blah, blah. And you literally mm. believe that. Believe me, those are the people that always, they always have good luck. All these weird things happen, right? Mm. And then there's the rest of us that have actual insecurities and things like that, that we're working through. Yeah. And we'll find that as we work through these insecurities, while we're having these fears in our lives, we actually pulsate out a specific frequency that attracts this other yes. weird set of moths to our mm. porch light. And then they F with our lives in some yeah. weird way. Yeah, and we're like, "Why does this happen?" That's not me pushed out. That guy was a jerk, mm. and it's like, yeah, the, the jerk to you, and that's yeah. that's the us pushed out part. It's like I'm requesting a jerk from the universe. Universe, I need a jerk. Anyone? Yeah. Anyone? <laughs> oh, Brad's your name? Come on over. Let's talk, Brad. <laughs> oh wow, you're such a jerk. Like, like yeah, yeah. That's how it works. I uh, know, so and it, it's a hard. It is a hard. It's hardcore this everyone's you pushed out because I know that it's easy to say, yeah, but I didn't know he was a narcissist. He was like that before I met him. I didn't create that. It's like, no, you didn't cause it. You can't cure it. But why are you in front of that person? Why are you in, the, in their orbit? Why are you in the pod with them currently? Right. Why? Because otherwise you would, have, you would have walked up to him and said, Brad, no, thank you. No, uh, thanks. Yeah, you would have just instantly yeah. been repelled by their odd yes. energy than finding someone else that's mm. loving and harmonious and wants yeah. to make babies by the dozens, right? And then you're like, well, there's, there's the, I mean, of course, that's, <laughs> who'd want to do that? But I mean, it's just saying. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Something like whatever you're looking for is what you will find, unfortunately. Yeah. And it's not what you say you're looking for. Yeah. It's what you feel. Yeah, At your, it's, like, it's yeah. your default thing. That's I, I, the default. Default thing is the magnet, not what you say. It's the default, as in what you really feel about men, what you really yeah. feel about women, what you really feel about relationships, about yourself, about what you saw growing up. It is the blueprint until you become conscious enough to go, hang on a minute, I keep attracting the same guy that has no job and is in debt 
Yeah. And he keeps having affairs with other women. So hang on, same guy, different clothes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why that's always happening. And yeah. I think too, Dan, because this is coming up a lot in coaching, people why go. Why do you keep describing me, by the way? I don't know. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but you've changed so much. I am right? working yeah. through it. I'm coming to terms. You're uh, getting so much better. I am stronger now every day. <laughs> you are. You are. What was I going to say? Oh, the speed. The speed. People get to know people, but they accelerate. You know, I, I hear this at like at least 50 times a week. You know, we got, we got to, there was so much connection and chemistry and we got into a relationship so fast. It's like ding, 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 yeah. ding, 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 ding. Burn really brightly. Yeah. Oh, you don't know someone just because you're having sex with them. You don't yeah. know someone just because you're having sex with them. There's a big difference between chemistry and connection. There's, you know, chemistry is not necessarily that's my soulmate. And I hear that a lot. I knew this person was my soulmate because the chemistry was strong. Chemistry is about sex. And sex is a wonderful thing, but it's not the basis for having a good relationship where you know somebody. You got to get to know somebody as a person. They're a human being. They're not when just got, an appendage. You got to talk to somebody the other like not four minutes, right? Like I mean, yeah. right, <laughs> you got time. Uh, you got to yeah. Well, I mean, I meant to double it. I mean, it sound like a like yeah. A, I think, I think slowing things down, Yeah. you know what? You don't go from meeting someone and then you see them every single day for the first three weeks. You continue on with your life. You still see your friends. You might catch up with them twice a week. Yeah, no problem. Right. It's but, not, but it's not like liking something on Facebook and then suddenly yeah. every day you're just like, oh, hey, yeah. like, like, yeah. It's, no, it's like yeah. too much of that energy um, yes. in person can actually be sort of weird right? Like it is. socially, a lot of us aren't able to handle too much of that energy. Yeah. So it is sometimes a good idea to slow I, it my down. Mom used gives to you time to me. process it, gives you yeah. time to look well, at it clearly. And it sends a different signal, frankly, yeah. um, too much attention, too much time, too much every, even if it's not in the wrong way is sort of perceived as um, like almost needy, almost mm. right. Like it's a different, it is, it is. Yeah. Like it, it, it can be perceived as, too needy, too much, too yeah. quick. I mean, yeah. I know if someone wanted to see me every night when I met them like last week, I'd be like, whoa. Yeah, pump the brakes. I would go, that person's not for me instantly. I would right. just, that would right. freak me out as a woman. That would freak me out. I do. Uh, as, as a man, that would freak me out as yeah. well. So just okay, so you know, well, that's, you that's a, we're crossing bridges there. <laughs> sure on that one. That's just freaky. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, and everybody has different likes and dislikes, but and we're not all the same, but I do think slowing things down because I think in this day and age of social media, I think we speed up the courting phase, the dating phase, and it goes too fast and then it goes pear-shaped right, just as right. quickly. Now, if you slow it down, not only because you never get that first bit again with that person. So you get you, if you sleep with someone too quickly, you never get to go back to not knowing what they look like when they're, when they're dressed. Like you never get to go back and, and get to savor that and enjoy it and, you know, get to know their likes and dislikes, see how they treat uh, someone, a, a waitress at a cafe. That to me tells me a lot about oh, a person. Oh God. That's, and for me, that was, that's such a key for me is to be able to see people interact with interact others. Interact with others. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's like the, one of the most telling things for me is, oh, goodness gracious. If they're yeah. mean to people a lot, you're like, whoa, yes. whoa, what is this? No, no. Exactly. No, exactly. No, no. Whether you're in a shop or a restaurant or how Anywhere. they talk to their family or whatever, you get to see those interactions over time. And that gives you information. Yeah, and you like all of a sudden you're like, well, I don't know why they were abusive. I'm like, well, he punched out the dude in the store the one time. <laughs> And then he's yelled at about 14 other people. Like there was some telltale signs yep. I think, along the way. Exactly. That's... Exactly. All well, right, so, okay. Uh, so we were, yeah. we were started with everyone's you pushed out on that one. Um, I think yeah. we took a uh, side detour. Yeah, But that's <laughs> on yes. And Dan radio style. That's, yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, question number three though, is kind yeah. of interesting. I'm just figuring girl meets guy, but ends very quickly. Yeah. Like two days to a week. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Also, just, well, no, we don't. Thought you're interested. We don't need to get in all that. But like, girl meets guy, doesn't work out. I'm assuming there's, I'm going to make some fun yeah. of them. 
Go ahead. Some color to the situation. Girl meets guy. The chemistry's there. It's great. Two days later, crickets. What the yeah. hell? I don't hear anything. What did I do? I, did I text him too many times? Did I what? Blah, blah, blah. So yeah. we're, we're us pushed out. What do you think? Is there something? I don't know. Well, Maybe. just because you, like it ends in two days, the person has met you. So they've got a sense of you. They've got a feeling of you. They've got either they've been drawn to you or pulled back and repelled from you for some reason. Could be that you just are not their type. As in physically, they don't find you what they, they have a preference. It might be that they were dating someone else and because they were trying to make a decision, they saw you, they saw somebody else and then they picked the other person you don't know, but if you do find out, well, then you go, hang on. Then maybe it was me with my I'm second bestness going on and me I'm not good enough going on. It could be that is one possible scenario in that case. So I, I would I would agree on all that too. Like that whole misery loves company thing. It's one thing yeah. where if you're one of those kind of, oh, everything sucked. Right? Like if you're in that life is always bad kind of mood, then you're going to not mm. want to be around people that are more positive and vice versa. So there, yeah. but there could be that kind of thing. Yes. Um, and you might be the more positive one. Right. And, and you and, might be someone who doesn't drink and that person really likes to drink and, you know, just, yeah. smoke you whatever just, they smoke and you're not a vibrational match to that. So they go, Oh, a person's not my style. Now that's not a negative. No, no, that's just, you're not, you know, and, you're not a match to what their habits are. So it could be that your self-love is actually something that they're not, um, their habits aren't up to speed with your self-love. So it could be that too. Saying, one, be happy you found out quickly, first off. Yes, really, yes. Saving yourself time. That's yep. really awesome. Two, when people first meet, first date, first anything, like when you walk up to a stranger on the street, you don't walk up to him and go, you know, I think about killing people all the time, right? Like you don't, you don't, do that right your yeah. whole premise is is to put your best foot forward and basically pretend you're a normal civilized human being until they yeah. get to know you <laughs> and, and so again the two-day thing you know sometimes we find a lot out about each other maybe it's good maybe it's bad but again it, it'd be happy that things don't work out quickly sometimes yeah yeah for sure and it could be you know something you could be putting off that vibe so i always think it's good to look inward first but Mm. Oh, someone's asking about uh, intuition on us pushed out. Like, I guess people, yeah. I don't know if you've ever had those moments where you, you kind of get a, a, a hanker and that something's going to happen. You kind of get an idea in your head. Mm. You're like, this is going to happen. And then, you know, like four seconds later, the person goes running across the red light or whatever, you know? So yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't know. Do you think there's any sort of um, tie in? Do you think we sometimes just pre precognition almost anyway? Or I mean, I, we don't usually talk about this. I think I'm way on the crazy side here. I think you're a little more. <laughs> well, I think I they're should, separate things. I think they're separate. Intuition yeah. is a feeling in your stomach. You feel okay. something. An intuition is a feeling, a gut. They often say, I had a gut feeling. Gut feelings are intuition. So you right. go, okay, that is separate to um, everyone's you pushed out because everyone you pushed out is a photocopy of you. So if you're feeling um, I'm too, I'm not attractive enough, no one's going to want me, then every time you go on a dating app and you try and meet people, you might make it to the first date, but then you'll never get a second date. So your underlying belief of I'm not attractive enough, no one wants to be with me because of that, well, and, and that think could be of totally your perception. It. That's I've, totally. I've read it before, but he looked nice. Yeah, yeah. How do you? What how is... do you? How do you look nice? Was Was there a puppy licking his face? How did he do that? Because I want to know. How do you look nice? <laughs> I don't know. That's a very. But we do different... it. We, we judge people by that. look, right? We do. We do. It should have worked. It just. But looked, he looks so really. Nice. You. Sh it's like. He looked nice to me is probably a more accurate or she that's looked us pushed nice to out. me. I think, yeah. I think yeah. that's where it's at. Like you yeah. somehow magically through a photo yeah. were able to attract the one guy that was not very nice. Interesting. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it is. I think the us pushed out thing is. It's fascinating because you know what, Dan, I, I do, I've got, 
in, in my coaching time, I've, de- I've coached about three models, like really attractive people. Mm. And these people did not attract people to be in relationship with. Now, from, from a, you know, just a general belief system of most people, you think, oh, well, they're models. They should be able to get people. That's what most people think about models. The they're insecure. attractive. They should get anybody. Uh, but no, it's not, it, it, it's not the more, more attractive people get the good relationships. It's the people that feel the best about themselves. I've seen some women that are a little bit bigger or a little bit, you know, what we would call not traditionally beautiful, but they had very good self-love, very good confidence, and they have fantastic relationships. So it's how they feel about themselves. And there's the everyone's you pushed out again. They attract great partners because the partners, whether they're gay or straight, are attracted to how they feel about themselves and that they're not sucking love out of them. So that is what's attractive, not so much the physical is, is, you know, how you look is how you look. You're born the way you're born. You can't help it unless you want to go and try and do something about that. But, you know, it's, it's you work with how can I feel the best about myself in terms of security, peace, confidence about who I am and work on that daily to become someone and it's not just relationships you attract, you attract opportunities, you attract better jobs yeah. because you feel good about you. Then people feel good to be around you and that drags people to you. And what we're doing in my mind right now is we're completely explaining how law of attraction works. Yeah. That's the attraction part. It's basically what yeah. your energy revs, yeah. what your energy situations doing is yeah. what you're attracting. You're, we're all floating around, blinging our yeah. own thing. Being annoyed, right and yeah. looking for that right match and all of that is done through some of these techniques we talk about right you imagine these people because it puts you into that that feeling space so you feel good so you start blinging at that right yep. frequency. and so we try to maintain that maybe some of us do meditation we do the 55 times five we do whatever from yeah. the end living in the here doing the whatever jump rope and with people like whatever you do like your thing <laughs> works yeah. Then do it. But that's okay. the point. Let's get you that feeling. And it helps now, you do that. Yes. No, you. And, and you've made a good point about the law of attraction. It does fit in with the law of attraction. Everyone's you pushed out. But you've got to take it a step back. The law of attraction really is not the first law in action. Mm-hmm. You have the law of assumption, what you assume about yourself, what you assume about other people, about your money, about your yeah, health. Yeah, about... Absolutely. Absolutely. So law of assumption is the first thing you assume, then the law of projection takes over, it goes out, then the law of attraction picks it up, photocopies it, brings it back to you. So it's kind of the third law in line. I, well, I agree it's a component to it, is all yeah. I'm saying. I, yeah, I'm not yeah, trying yeah, to say no, it's no. In any all. And I believe there's like many, many different laws kind of at work too. Heaps. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the, without a doubt, we're on, we're on board the same there. I was, I guess, oversimplifying it. And I think that's also good to call out uh, like you said, to take that step back and you're right. Cause mm. it's not all law of attraction, but mm. certainly that energetics for one, I, I think applies to all three of your laws, frankly. Uh, but they, uh, it starts yeah. at what you project out and that's basically, it bounces off. It's what we call the ripple effect. So I'm yes. shooting out this energy ray and it goes bow, bow, and shoots back at me. And that's, yeah, that's projection. I mean, that's it in a nutshell. You like the, can you bow, do, it one more, do it one more time? Th- Ah, yeah. well, I got hit by the energy. It came back. <laughs> I just got it. <laughs> the power of the internet, folks. That's what I'm talking about. Broadband will do for you. I'm just saying. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yes. So that was um, that was Miss Hill, and uh, she had some great questions. And I thought um, I had uh, I had a couple. We'll see. We'll see what we have time for. Um, but this is one, and I think this is an interesting us pushed out concept. Uh, and, and I think it's timing, and I think it's a lot of things. But I'm curious, kind of where you're your yeah. take is a little chit chat, but you know, you hear those examples of people talking about getting onto someone's uh, social media platform, whatever it is, right? Whichever one fill in blank here. And they happen to catch a, a photo or some moment of a third party. Yes. And maybe there's not a lot of text behind it. Maybe they're at Disneyland, right? Like who knows? And we instantly, our mind starts racing about, you know, all the different things that we're assuming are actually happening. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to me, I guess I feel like the timing of it, 
the fact that I happened to look right when I did, like I could have looked just before they posted it right in yeah. and then had another 12 hours and maybe got buried by another photo yeah. or whatever, or I happened to be stalking them, whatever the case is. But I feel like we set up that timing and then I feel like the projection of what's happening, we fill in the blanks. Typically normal people's minds start yeah. wandering down the path of filling in all these facts that you do not have at all yep. in any way, shape or form. And most of it's not verifiable, but we make it up anyway, because it's fun. It's fun. Mm. It's a game play. And then all of a sudden, now we've got this opinion about something that we know nothing about, but we've, we know everything. And so I guess that's where I think that's a huge kind of mm. thing that a lot of us do. And I don't know, I was just thinking what, yeah. what you get people. That no, do I, I do think we instantly put on the betrayal glasses. You know, that's a third party. That could be a family friend. It could be your, co your cousin that's showed up from, you know, South America to visit it. Look, it could be anybody, but if it's that person, that's the gender that you're always a bit fearful of. And they're maybe a little attractive or maybe a little something. And they could be a little off. attractive. Yeah, exactly. You instantly interpret and we jump to interpretations and we assign meaning to things. And I think this is one of the ways that we totally injure ourselves repeatedly over and over again is by doing that. And so, by the way, in my mind too, in this case, and this is something that frustrates me about like this labeling everything us pushed out. I, yes, I agree that the projection, to your point, the projection is jacked up. What yeah. bing, back at me wasn't cool, but you've really got to take this step back and look at what's causing me to project this out. It's, yes. It's all us pushed out, but it's like, yeah, but you're not happy with you. Like exactly. You, you're, you're not seeing the rock star that you should see. And because of that, you're attracting all these haphazard people in your mm. life that, you know, are challenges in any number of ways, who knows, but you're always finding that they're just not quite right. Or, um, maybe that specific person you're interested in, just you get close and then they drift away and it's like, what am I doing wrong? And there yeah. must be something I'm not, maybe I'm not thin enough. Maybe I'm not, yeah. pretty like we instantly go down this. I know. Thing. And it's yeah. not that you're projecting out per se. It's like, maybe you still don't love yourself enough yet. Yes. That vibration isn't high enough. And I, I think it's sad that yeah. a lot of us jump to conclusions for sure. Yeah. But then the, the, the other processes would, what, what's wrong heal that heal that love heal that, that part of you that needs a needs a yeah. hug and, and 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 amazingly things yeah change. i agree because it's the basic the base feeling or the state as neville says or the feeling place as abraham hicks says it's that basic place where you default when you see that did you instantly think that could be anybody i'm just going to have my salad or did you think Oh my God, he's seeing someone else. When did that happen? He told me he was dating me. You know, you go into that. So you, it, depending on which way you go, you go, okay, well, hang on. If I reacted to where I saw it, I didn't have a reaction. And I thought to myself, I'm just going to go and eat a salad. That could be anybody. That's someone who has good self esteem, someone who has good self love and someone who feels pretty much first best in their own skin not in an arrogant way, but in a confident way. The second reaction of, oh, you know, he said he was dating me and all that stuff, that went into fear, jealousy, second bestness and insecurity. So you go, okay, if I interpreted it the second way, then that means I've really got to work on my self-love and I've got to work on my I'm secure because I don't feel secure at all. I've just jeopardized my security by seeing one photo and I interpreted it without knowing if it was true and then I tortured myself emotionally with the evidence of something that may not even be real. Right. So, now, but that's tricky also, to do. It is tricky to do. It is. I'm not saying that that's easy, but you got to give yourself the, what's the word? Um, benefit of the doubt. You, not, you're not giving yourself them the benefit of the doubt. You're giving yourself the benefit of the doubt so that you don't torture yourself emotionally. That's a self-loving thing to do in that instance, you see. And certainly if, if it's one of those situations we talk about not going onto their social media, this would be another yeah. reason why it's generally better and easier not to. To uh, yeah. Because then you don't have to necessarily deal with these like moments where you're like, this is something that either A is happening, B, maybe sometimes there's context, maybe they're kissing, right? Like it's Yeah. Kind of, yeah. It could be something like together, that. Right. Like uh, I'm not just saying in all situations you're incorrect assuming that they're with someone else. I'm just saying mm. it's it is a projection, the timing. Mm. 
being attracted maybe to someone at that point. Like there's a lot of components that come. Mm, in. There I'm are. To overly simplify every. There are. Situation. Yeah. But this was kind of one of those where I think a lot of us sometimes will jump to conclusions. Yeah. Um, for sure. I guess uh, we'll, we'll cover the first one. I, I, I'm, I'm choosing at least on these next two and we'll see how yep. much further. But um, I, a question I get a lot of, and, and I, it's not an easy one and it's not one that we're necessarily going to answer here in a, in a way that maybe will please anybody or everybody or some, you know, there, but it is one of those parts of this whole us pushed out mm -hmm. rainbow that many of us like to paint, paint everything with this super big brush, right? Everything. Well, it's us pushed out. It's all us pushed out. And a lot of people bring up some of the obvious ones. What about robbers? What about uh, mm -hmm. killers? What about, you know, baby snatchers i don't know whatever what mm. about abandoned clownfish which by the way was nemo okay. finding nemo everyone was missing that little fish and it was very <laughs> sad for a while I don't, you laugh on yes but that fish was missing i can't anyway. say i remember that part i watched nemo a long time ago <laughs> silly fish kept getting lost apparently i don't know i don't know why they were looking for him i really didn't watch him but apparently some people were trying to find him and that's yep. unfortunate Sorry, sorry, Nemo. Anyway, so yeah. yeah, why do bad things exist in the world if if it's just all us pushed out? Mm. I guess that's the, let's just jump on okay. that crazy question because it is uh, really it's kind of a, a very silly question. Like you're trying to really establish a, a more micro world rule mm. to broader context, and mm. I have my theories on that, and and you have your kind mm. of feel and view on it. We sort of shared it earlier, just so neither yeah. one of us would be surprised. But yeah. I, I think they're both different. And, and unique and and uh and also i think both valid frankly in my opinion but anyway so what what are your kind of take on this whole why do how does law of attraction exist yeah. if, if we've got all this horrible stuff in the world now? well i think abraham hicks explains this the best and it kind of was the explanation that made the most sense to me was it's when you it's all energy. So, you know, we have balance. So when you're in self-love, you attract self-loving people, right? So when the balance does that, when you're feeling like a victim and you're feeling that you, you know, no one treats me well, people are bullies, people are cruel, whatever you got going on, you attract, as Abraham Hicks says, vibrational islands. So, you know, Jerry once said, why don't, he said to Abraham in this particular conversation with Abraham, why don't we put all the murderers together on one island and they can just, you know, be there with themselves. And Abraham said, we already have vibrational islands, but it's not the murderers with the murderers or the, the, the you know, it's, it's yeah. the victims with the, 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 perpetrators that it's an unfortunate how they explained it made sense to me because we we do have a collective consciousness different countries globally you know within your own town you have got collective consciousness i mean all we got to do is look at you know down south in the usa there's a collective consciousness there about certain things also, you look at, I mean, I look at my own country of where I was born, there's a co collective consciousness around infidelity. Infidelity is like, so what? That's acceptable. We do what we want, even when people are married. Now, I haven't lived there for a long time and I find that totally unacceptable, but that's my country's collective consciousness about being with people sexually. Okay. So, there are there's collective consciousness in certain countries in certain areas but i do think that when you're looking at like the question you just asked about you know those kind types of people that the vibration and the energy brings things together and when you're looking at energy rather than this person's good this person's bad why you know like that 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 just looks when you're looking at it it just looks so unfair and it is emotionally incredibly disturbing especially if it's something that's happened to someone in your family or something that's happened to you i mean you know i 
I just think this is such a minefield and such a big question. I think for people that want to discover that a little bit more and go into more depth with it, I think if you go to YouTube and put in Abraham Hicks, when bad things happen to good people, because there are lots of YouTubes and you may agree, you may not agree, but just, li just listen to it to see what yeah. you think and see where you sit on, on what she says, because it's a huge issue. And it is a, I understand that it comes, the question comes from a lot of emotion and often a lot of feeling of being victimized and it's unfair and all of that. But I just don't think it's something we can answer in a short one little bit of time. And also it's not a simple question. It's a, it's yeah. a can of worms on its own. Well, and there's so many scenarios under the sun. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's very broad in its context. Who's involved? Yes. Um, certainly there are components energetically like you brought up. So I love the fact that you covered really my, my, the parts that I had, I felt about it really is that there's a collective consciousness aspect. There's a thing where we tend to end up where we're the right place at the right time or the mm. wrong place. At the wrong time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and Dan talking about that, the, the example that comes to mind is people that they're, they're about to catch a plane they end up in traffic, they miss their flight, and then that plane crashes and you go, hang on a minute, why did I miss that plane? Everybody, you know, the three of us missed it and the other 365 passengers made it. Why was I spared that and why weren't they? Like it, all those really big questions about timing. I mean, that alone, that whole thing about plane crashes uh, in terms of what we're talking about who today. Make it, who did right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean and that, on that fly. Mm, exactly. I think timing is one of my favorite things, even timing. when you hit like a red light at an odd time, like you're coming up, it's green. There's no one anywhere. Yes. But all of a sudden it throws a red on you. You're like, really? Mm. I thought I was more abundant than that. It's like, no, no, you're like, it's altering your timing just so when you end up, at yep. a shop, the person right behind you in line or whatever is going to be like someone you need to talk to or yes into someone at just the right moment like timing's mm. a really neat thing when you pay attention to life and all those mm. little weird nuances and that's that's one of the things i get accused of often is i notice weird stuff and i do i notice stuff <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what other people notice but i seem to notice stuff other yeah people notice. yeah but it is funny the timings of life and how they work out and timing is amazing and those split seconds of you know it's like with every tragedy you think people didn't get to work that day and they missed a terrorist attack or this happened well, and they missed and a lot that. of accidents you know, all those happened amazing. because I was just looking at the radio or I was just doing this and I was just for a second. Yeah. And, oh my God. I turned my head for just a moment. And I this know. Happened. And I got hit by lightning or, you yeah. know, those amazing where you were just that one in a million second oh, at thanks. the absolutely right place or the absolutely wrong place. So yeah. no, it's look, that is just a huge conversation, um, which I, I think it's not something that you and I can answer here, but I do think no, there's no. so much stuff on YouTube and Google about this one subject. It's worth, if you're interested in well, it and it says something to you that you go and have a look and do. There's some a myriad of theories. I mean, a lot of them maybe touch a little, some of them are mm. totally polars. I mean, uh, polar opposites, but it, yeah. it's one of those things where I think to a degree, you kind of have to come to your own yes. place of comfort with your it own place of comfort. Yeah, exactly. It's a, bigger issue without a doubt and it's huge yes, it sucks and so there's no way to it's like just well if they just think positive that wouldn't happen yeah yeah no yeah. i obviously it's a little broader than it's that, broader than that yeah yeah all right the last one i'm gonna go ahead and touch we're getting we're getting a little long on the tooth as they might say uh, yeah. <laughs> um but we're gonna cover the uh, politicians like there's a lot yes. going on in the world i, I don't want to get overly political because there's yeah there's nothing good that comes out of that. So that's not yeah. my point. But no. what I'm noticing, like in my country for sure, is there's uh, the people that support the president and the people that just adamantly hate the president. And there's yes. really just two polar extremes here. So it's very, yes. very strange. Uh, you've got in Europe right now a lot of issues with the European Union and everything going on, the Brexit yep. and the fact that three countries are paying for a lot, but the other countries are, you know, whatever. Mm. And you've got, I think, some interesting behaviors going on in New Zealand and Australia. Uh, and there's probably things going on in China and everywhere else. Uh, Russia seems to be right rattling, you know, and things are happening. Ukraine, you've got all this, right? So th there's a mm. lot going on in the world right now, change wise. Like, mm. how's that us pushed out? Or is that, again, I mean, this is kind of more in that collective, mm. but we seem to be steering these ships. And I guess that's where I'm mm. leaning to a little in my direction is 
it's a focus-based universe, right? And I wonder often anyway, and I'm certainly well aware of many studies that have been done on this, but when we collectively focus at one time, mm. I think there's a power to that sometimes. I really do. It's Definitely. Like, and the power of pushing against things like the, the classic example is the one with Mother Teresa, that, that the quote of hers that, no, you know, that we've heard so many times where she says, I'm not coming to a um, anti-war rally, but if you have a peace rally, then invite me. And yeah. it's like, this is the same. I mean, I, I move around to lots of different countries, as you know, three in particular. Now, it doesn't matter which country I'm in, whenever people talk about politicians, the collective consciousness is they're just a pack of liars and they just do stuff for their own benefit. It, and that is a collective amongst the three countries I've been to. That is often the way that people, ordinary people talk about them. So if you've got the collective consciousness of that and you're looking at everyone's you pushed out, well, there's your photocopy. You know, but they've been doing this for generations and generations. This isn't something new. So you think, okay, what were our parents thinking? What were our pe grandparents thinking about politicians then? And, you know, so when you're looking at it as a, a scale of what has been passed down to you about politics and politicians, you think, okay, well, what do I think that, about it? What am I, you know, projecting out? So, it's like you can slice it in thinner and thinner slices to look at it. And it's fascinating. It is fascinating. And so, I will say one thing, and this is a lot to you and probably a little less to me just because it's, I don't know, I, I, I'm looking at it from a slightly different angle, but there's also the side of this where you don't really pay attention to it at all. And I'll say <laughs> there is a wonderful, beautiful bliss yes. of kind of removing, and it yeah. really is preferred behavior. I recommend yes. it by far. And I'm not saying what I'm doing is, but I think the, the distinction, I think just to keep it simple is it's when you emotionally can detach from it, then yes. I think it's one thing. Cause now you're just watching it objectively yeah. uh, versus watching it and having it emotionally charge you. And that's where I feel it becomes dangerous because now think about that energy that you're blinging off is yeah. now of just a frequency that's attracting more of that. Mm. And I think from a collective standpoint, we start to create a different situation than we intend to. Mm. So I do believe without a doubt, and uh, is there is a collective power. And when you get enough people to focus on the same sort of thing, uh, you can change the world in different ways. And it depends what you get people to focus on. So yeah. to me, there's a, there's a, a an inherent power to getting yeah. a lot of collective thoughts at the same time so mm. some of that political stuff i kind of wonder too how much of it's meant to cause people to feel a certain way and behave yeah. a certain way and believe a certain way and when you do that you, they kind of self-heard yeah versus, hey wait a minute why is this good for anybody like mm. you know, who's benefiting from this really isn't there other exactly. ways exactly and, and you know what there will come a time where someone starts a good news channel and then i will go back to watching i did a good news week <laughs> I did like eight, I don't know, 10 episodes, 12 episodes. It was so barely watched relative to my normal number. Yeah. I, I should retry it again, but it was fun to try to do. And yeah, I mean, it was a lot of work too. finding good news stories, by the yes. way. Yes. Yeah. You know, I'll bet. Um, but yeah, you find good stuff and you throw it Actually, out. Let's put it down below Dan. Cause I mean, the fact that you oh, did that, I, let's put it down so below as a link. Yeah, I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> It was, yeah, it was brutal. It was brutal. But, and it was forever ago. So I don't know. The news isn't even relevant anymore, but it was, uh, it was fun to try. Uh, I mean, we'll see. We'll get back into it one of these days. Yeah. Well, I just think you, I mean, we covered Excellent. it. I, Excellent. I think, no, it's good, good uh, subject. I think it's something that, you know, people ask a lot about this subject more so as they get to know about it, but it's learning so, about it in relation to you and what you've got around you, especially when it's things that are causing you, disturbance or pain if you can look at it in those situations to kind of dismantle dissolve and 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 remove those situations from your life that's when it's a value to you to give you relief and again i just want to step to the point that again a lot of us get so focused on what just got flashed back to us on the mm. projection i love by the way i just first time i'm hearing a lot of projection i actually have never heard that so I thought oh, it was okay good. so 
very cool concept. And I love that without a doubt, because that's really what law of attraction is, is we're just rippling stuff out. So I like how it breaks it down into this law of re, uh, projection, law of reflection, you said, and then law of law, attraction. Law of assumption. Assumption. There you go. Assumption. Oh, yeah, yeah. Law of okay, projection. Yeah. 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 But the projection part I love because it really yeah. is what we're blinging out and sending out mm. is what gets bounced back to us. So a lot yeah. of times we focus so much on the reflection and go, mm. wow, it's, it's us pushed out. You, you fail to remember. Yes, but you caused that a moment ago with the initial projection. So what caused that? What caused mm. the pain? What's causing that little part of you that doesn't mm. think you're good enough or, or maybe thinks that you, some other situation or believes in some weird thing? Like a lot of times we have to look what, why am I restricting myself? Mm. I think power comes in. And I, I always tell people to embrace that part of ourselves rather than be upset and come up with all these affirmations. Like, how can I keep it from happening? And it's like, don't keep it from happening. You heal that part. You fix that. You look at that part. You self love that part. You do whatever yeah. you got to do to make that part dissolve basically. Yep. And then you don't question it anymore. Then it goes away just all by its very nature because you've healed it. And exactly. I, I, think, I think we fail to see the, the gift that sometimes that is. Mal malfunctions show us, you know what I yeah. mean? It's like, Kind of a good thing usually. Malfunctions. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a good like, word. Yeah, that's a good yeah. word, a malfunction. Yeah, sometimes yeah. it happens. Yeah. It? But anyway, Anya, you're the best. I'm glad we could do this. Uh, yeah, it's I think good. This is a topic that we could probably do 15 hours on. And maybe, I know. maybe over the next 10 years, maybe one of these days we'll do an us pushed out convention or yeah. something. Fun. Yeah, yeah it sounds good. good. No, it's a great look. And there's also Neville's done um, some YouTubes on everyone's you pushed out. I'll put the links down below for those people that want yeah. it. And you can watch those like 15 times in a row and then it'll probably yeah. make sense at that yeah. final one. You'll be like, all right, yeah. no, yeah. I, I yeah. listened to that same sentence 12 And Dan, times. have you got a playlist on everyone's you pushed out? We'll put your playlist down below. Uh, I don't one. have a playlist yet. Um, okay. I, I could do that though. I don't, yeah, I guess that's probably a good idea. I sometimes yeah, group them. doing them to group because guy, you watch like 12 of them and I've kind of like vary through time. I mean, it's still similar, but yeah. you know, like, I take it from different angles. It's like a different, mm. like sometimes I do videos on, you know, if you're frustrated and you give up something or if you're not, then if you're frustrated, well, then here's a way to increase it. Like I've done different angles of stuff, you know, yeah. and I, I, people are like, well, you said in this video, I was like, well, yeah, but I was covering a different angle. <laughs> I'm complex like that, but yeah, I, I'll, I'll put together uh, some, that's a good idea. Good someone, idea someone wrote in the thread of a comment, um, in one of my YouTubes, I saw it today and it said, and yes, you're my favorite angle. <laughs> I you just are. love, I love that. I think you know that <laughs> I've never been say, someone's favorite angle <laughs> of the angles that are out there. You without a doubt are <laughs> yeah, the aforementioned best superist. I angle. love being an angle. It's, that um, needs to become the new, like I'm, I'm going to remember that I think <laughs> and the number one angle Agnes Vivarelli there is joining me today. There we go. On the angle. The angle yeah. I love it. Yeah. It's a triangle. Yeah. I don't know. That's one of the angles, yeah. but Agnes is the best angle. Exactly. Uh, exactly. I just thought that is too endearing. I just loved it. I had to I had to reply. I said, I'm grateful I'm your favorite angle. I am I just consider this one of those gift <laughs> moments in life because I can I mean that's gonna make it my stand-up book probably angle. <laughs> Places I could go off on that. I think it was so freaking awesome. So thank well, you. I, bet, I better go. I got someone. Yes, to, yes. In the got Zoom someone room. Someone ding dong in the Zoom room. Nice, it's nice. Anyway, Zoom well, thank room. you, Anya. I appreciate all your time and effort. Thank you, everyone. Okay, we'll say bye, and then I'll say bye to you quickly Absolutely. before I go. Bye, everybody. I hope bye, you've everybody. enjoyed our organic nut session. <laughs> Without a doubt. Thanks. <laughs>